This time we're in the Dingle Peninsula on part two of our Southwest Island trip, spending the night in Dingle and touring the Sleahead Drive. Make sure you check out part one and compare the Ring of Kerry Drive. The only town on the Dingle Peninsula, Dingle is a delightful, typical Irish fishing town. To get here you really need a car, as the nearest train station is in Tralee, some 30 miles away. The nearest airport is Kerry. Whilst catering for the tourist, Dingle maintains its charm with an array of colourful shops, B&Bs and pubs. Glass, local craftware and woolen items are its specialty. A distillery, brewery and aquarium mean there's lots of choice for everyone. The local celebrity Fungi the Dolphin can sometimes be seen in the harbour and little boats offer trips out to find him. We spent the night at Murphy's B&B and at 85 euros for a room with a full Irish breakfast, it was a great choice as a base. As their website states, Dick Max has been serving liquid refreshments since 1899. This is a truly unmissable place for a traditional experience. A pub on one side and a leather shop on the other. The outer buildings and food van called The Beast add to the charm. The attached brewery also offers tours during the day. The atmosphere is infectious and the live music in most pubs will have you drinking more and tapping along. The Dingle Pub, in its colourful shamrock colours, is always lively, again with music and food. With an unpronounceable name, we spent a few hours here watching the world go by and jiggling along to the accordion. Having done our pub crawl and sunk a few too many Guinness, it was time for bed to be ready for the Sleahead Drive. The Sleahead Drive is a loop starting and finishing in Dingle. You can drive either way round, but I read somewhere it's better if everyone goes in a clockwise direction. The roads can be very narrow in parts, as you will see. There are plenty of places to pull over in safety and admire the cliff edges, even on a brisk day. The sea air and the views will take your breath away. On the clockwise route, you soon arrive in Fahan. Look out for the signs for the beehive huts. We stopped at the second one, which was larger and had some nice modern toilets. The beehive huts are very complex in structure, dating back apparently to 2000 BC. They are dry stone, so made just by laying stones on top of each other with no other support.
You could also carefully handle the lambs that have been hand reared as they were rejected by their mothers. A few euros allows you access to the huts and the sheep, so it's well worth a quick stop. Reaching the Cross of Slea on the peninsula, the views become much more dramatic and the roads narrow and challenging as they cut into the rock face. From here on in, the scenery just gets more and more amazing, so take a moment now to enjoy. Take a detour on a side road to Dunquin, follow the signs to the ferry and enjoy a walk at this picturesque area. Coa Head has some interesting views. As we headed back into Dingle, the weather turned, but that didn't stop us from driving to our last destination, Connor Pass. Up winding, twisting roads, you climb quickly, and at the top you're welcomed with panoramic views. Bring warm clothes as it's always a few degrees cooler up here, and it can be wet. We hope you've enjoyed our two-part series on the Ring of Kerry and Dingle Peninsula. Which one do you think is more stunning? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell to be notified of our future travel videos. Until the next time, happy travels from the Memory Seekers.